All right, this video is the second video in a series on masking. We're using the same hearing profile from the first video, so be sure to check that out if you haven't already. If masking is hard for you, you are not alone. In this video, we're going over how to determine if masking is needed for bone conduction thresholds. With bone conduction, we should assume a really low interaural attenuation, which we talked about in our last video. In this simulation, we're assuming that the interaural attenuation is zero dB. Under this assumption, when you get a bone conduction signal presented, you don't really have a way to tell which ear responded to the signal. The left and right symbols on the audiogram suggest that the stimulator was on the left or right mastoid during testing, but the response may have come from either ear. I should note at this point, there are a lot of feelings about bone conduction masking and when you should or shouldn't do it, so be sure to check with your supervisor or instructor for more details. These videos are intended only as a supplement. So how do we know if we need to mask? It's a little bit tricky with bone conduction. The best practices method would say that you should always mask bone conduction thresholds, and that way you don't have to wonder which ear truly responded. Many clinicians, though, choose to save time by not masking bone conduction thresholds as long as that threshold isn't a concern. When you think about it from that perspective, the key question becomes, does it make a significant difference if there's response is coming from the right or the left ear? If the answer is yes, then you should mask. In general, most people agree that a 10 dB air bone gap is an acceptable difference between air and bone thresholds. And if the gap gets bigger than that, you should start to wonder if that response is coming from the non-test ear or if it's a true threshold for your test ear. So let's look at 500 Hertz. Again, in best practice, you would probably try to mask each ear to make sure that uh, each threshold is a true response. In this case, the left ear bone conduction threshold would likely go up by five or 10 dB to better match the air conduction threshold. But by using our shortcut, we ask our question, does it matter if this response is coming from the right or the left ear? Considering this left ear still, if we presented and this response came from the left ear, then it's a reasonable distance from the air conduction threshold and we would assume that this loss is sensory neural. If the response came from the right ear, then we could assume that the left ear threshold is the same or better, which wouldn't change anything since the result would still be determining that there's no conductive component as we already have an acceptable air bone gap. So in this case, we don't need to mask. Let's take a look at 1000 Hertz. We ask our question, does it matter if this response is coming from the right or the left ear? In the right ear, the air and bone thresholds are the same, so we don't need to worry about that. In the left ear, we have a significant or greater than 10 dB air bone gap. At this point, I'm raising up a red flag. If this response came from the left ear, then it means I have found a conductive component in the hearing. If the response came from the right ear, it means we haven't found the true threshold yet, and the loss could be conductive or it could be sensory neural. So does it matter which ear the bone conduction response came from? Yes, so we need to mask to figure out what's going on. Let's take another look at 2000 Hertz just to walk through another example. We ask our question, does it matter if this response is coming from the right or the left ear? In the right ear, the air and bone thresholds are within an acceptable 10 dB air bone gap, so we're not concerned about it. In the left ear, we have a significant or greater than 10 dB air bone gap. The same red flag should go up here. If the left bone conduction response came from the left ear, then we've found a big conductive component. If it came from the right ear, then the hearing at 2000 Hertz in the left ear could be sensory neural or conductive. So does it matter which ear the bone conduction response came from? Yes, so we need to mask to confirm what's going on. The formula or rule you probably learned here is that you mask anytime you see an air bone gap greater than 10 dB. I hope the way I walked you through it helps you to think about the clinical concerns behind the rule. If you have any questions, if you would have done things differently or you have a comment to share, post it down below. For more videos like this, please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.